Let's be honest, the air cooler segment for small form factor machines just sucks. It's just never good. It's either a mini thing pretending to be a cooler, or you got the RAM compatibility of sidewise mounted laptop RAM. The point is, it's, it's never good, but things can improve. This is the new Nokia NHL 12 SX77. Nokia's obvious trend of obscuring their naming scheme aside, this is the improved version of their previous NHL 12 And on paper, it's definitely an upgrade where it counts. And where things worked, they just stayed. Like from far away, it looks like the same cooler. It got the same 38 by 40 mm nickel copper plated base and Nokia still includes their 50 mm thin NFA12 X15, spinning it up to 1850 RPM while it's pushing up to 55.4 CFM at 1.53 mm of H2O. And the things that did mostly change revolve around the heatsink. On one side, it's now actually a tiny bit smaller, where the previous heatsink was 113 mm deep, the new one only measures 107 and it has become taller. Originally the NHL 12S was 70 mm high when the fan was installed below or what they just called low profile mode. This of course had a huge impact on your potential RAM compatibility as there aren't that many sub 35 mm high RAM sticks around anymore. The new version is now 7 mm taller and combined with a few tweaks on the heat pipes we are now looking at up to 44 mm high RAM so 9 mm more and and that is huge. At 44 millimeters, we have options. And the same goes for the high clearance mode or having the fan sitting on top. As on both coolers, we can just relocate the fan to sit on top of the heatsink, be it pushing it down or pulling it up. In this high compatibility mode, the RAM modules can now be up to 56 millimeters high, which funnily enough is more than the average dual tower, dual fan, 140 millimeter air cooler where you push the fan all the way down. So overall, we lost a bit in case compatibility due to the added 7 mm, but we flat out won 9 mm in RAM. But that wasn't even the actual update. The biggest changes are on the heatsink, cause instead of 4, we now got 6 heat pipes in a cooler of this size. Unique to say the least. But before we take a look at how this performs, let's finish the general stuff. The new LS12X77, yeah, Nokia needs to chill with the names, it comes in the usual Nokia package containing all the necessary mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, as well as some thermal paste and a screwdriver. To get it going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate and shove the Intel bolts through them out of position for LGA 1700 and 1851 and inner one for the older sockets, and then lock them in place with the spacer clips on the other side. And make sure to have the bolts come out on the side where it says it should be facing the motherboard. Once the backplate is behind the motherboard, take the appropriate spacer, blue for LGA 1700, put them on there, add the interretention brackets with the ends pointing away from the chip and screw everything down. And by the way, you can freely choose how you want to rotate them. If you want to have the heat pipes on the left side, install the retention brackets top and bottom, and the other way around if you want to have them in the bottom. Just don't use them in the top. There was a post by Noctia a few years back on the original L12 and apparently that, that's a no-no. Over on AMD, we have choices. Noctia includes two sets of mounting systems, one where the cooler will have the heat pipes left and right and one where it's going to be in the bottom. Both are installed in the same way. First we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the grey AMD spacers. Then we slap the retention brackets on top and screw everything down. But for both mounting mechanics we got two sets of holes, one saying zero and the other one saying minus seven millimeters. This is because AMD CPUs have their heat concentrated towards the bottom of the IHS and as some intelligent people have found out, lowering the cooler by a few millimeters can make the whole thing cool much much better. Hence you can lower down the cooler if you use the minus 7 millimeter holes. Just use all of them if you do. Which we would also totally recommend. Just make sure that the CPU arrows are pointing into the right direction. Then for both sockets, some thermal paste and slap the cooler on top. And they did the same thing they already did on the original L12S where there are holes in the top of the heatsink which align perfectly with the fan so you don't actually need to remove the fan to install the whole cooler. You can just slap the screwdriver through those holes. It, it works perfectly fine. Before we jump into the benchmarks, I need to correct something. For some time, we had the original L12S on our benchmark charts. The original review wasn't made on the benchmark machine that we are using today. That video was a very long time ago. But somewhere in between, I have re-benchmarked the L12S on the new machine and I have kept the results in the chart. I probably needed them for something or a video, I just don't remember. 
But the problem is that these are not the numbers or the actual results of a L12S. These are what happens if you use an L12S with one fan on top and one fan below. Basically push-pull. I'm not sure how that happened. I I'm sorry that it happened and I have corrected them for today's video and every one that will follow will also have the new numbers but I, I wanted to make sure that this is clear that something happened there. There were results. I guess I, I never talked about them which is why I uh, never realized that there was an issue, but just to be clear so that nobody is confused why the results have changed all of a sudden in a future video if somebody jumped from older videos to newer videos. Anyway, for our results today, we benchmark the L12S X77 on both AMD and Intel. On AMD, we use solely the offset mounting for both new and old L12S, and we normalized the fan orientation. So the cooler is always blowing air up and away from the chip, and on Intel, we also tested the cooler with the fan sitting below as well as on top, because the results are quite impressive, or the, the change is quite impressive. And then for AMD, the fan was just sitting on top on both coolers because that's just the better result. And I want to try what we can do with it, not what we can do with it in cripple mode. For the Intel benchmarks, we use the usual 3900K benchmark machine using the three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. Uh, yeah, let's be honest here, no way this is doing two f even 250. It's a small form factor cooler. After 120 watts, we are done. Allowing the A12X15 to go wild on a 120 watts workload made the CPU stay at 43.4 degrees C above ambient, which is a result, it's definitely way better than all of the ultra small form factor coolers that don't have a clearly separated heatsink, and in general, I mean, given its form factor, it's fine. This was never supposed to be a chart topper, but it is a small form factor cooler, so it's also like small form factor cooling. But the thing I found slightly surprising was how close it ended up to the Hyper 212 Halo refresh. Sure, it's 4 degrees, but on the other hand, it's only 4 degrees. Another very important comparison here is the exact same cooler with a fan mounted below. Even if this will probably be the more ideal choice given what kind of cases this cooler is made for, I think the difference between fan on top and fan below is huge. What's even more important is that with the fan below, the cooler is actually within margin of error of the original one with its fan mounted on top. I know this isn't quite the perfect comparison, but it is still surprising to see that the position of a fan can have the same impact as adding two additional heat pipes. But there is actually more to this part of the story and we will get to that in a minute. For the noise to performance graphs, we slightly lower the fan speed in 10% steps and we measure the performance and noise along the way to create a noise to performance ratio across the whole spectrum. Over there, we can clearly see a distinction between the original L12S and the new one with the fan below and the new one with the fan on top. The two new graphs being very close to identical to each other, one of them just being offset by a few degrees. And compared to smaller one-block solutions like the L9X65 or Scythe Shuriken 2, it is of course a bloodbath. These are not even nearly comparable. But so is the bigger C14. Sure, it's a lot bigger, but how this thing performs in comparison to any L12S is also kind of brutal. Normally I would now say let's go to 250, but yeah, no, no way 250 watts is doable on this thing. It just thermal throttles instantly. Over on AMD, we benchmark a relatively stock Ryzen 7950X3D and we measure the performance of a cooler based on the average clock speed of all cores that the cooler can maintain at a given fan speed. And to start off, neither the new nor old L12S were able to keep the 7950X3D even close to its usual 5GHz average clock speed. Not even close. Though the C14 didn't quite manage to do that either. But if we concentrate on the old versus the new one, the the L12S X77, god I always forget that S. The L12S X77 is a small bump in performance towards the higher end speed, or noise depending on how you want to look at it, and towards the lower ones, the older actually takes over for some time, which is kind of odd and, and interesting at the same time. But the most interesting part is actually this here. Why is the old L12S a bit louder than the new one? Something that we already had on the Intel benchmarks. Well, I'm glad that our AMD benchmarks are fully automized and I had the logs to investigate that because the fan of the, or the fan that we got with the new 
L12S X77 is actually spinning slower than the one that came on the old one. Now this isn't anything new, fans are sold with a 10% range, let's say, in max RPM, every somewhat reputable fan manufacturer will write that on the box. And we now got two heat pipes more in the heatsink, which means added resistance, which can mean lower fan speed. But let's be honest, 5% is a bit too much for two heat pipes, so the fan is just spinning a tick slower. And for all of our tests, we just take the fan that is included in the box. I don't care if it doesn't work as well as the same fan in another box. It is tested as it comes. On the grand scheme, on Intel, the X77 version of the L12S is an upgrade, yes. Just not a huge one. If the fan orientation is identical, yes, there is a difference. But if you mix things up, the results can actually end up really close to each other. On AMD, is also just a small update with a weird twist at the end. But an update if you look at what you can do with it. But it's also taller. You may have won a few degrees, one or two, and a few, or a few megahertz, but you still lost seven millimeters in height compatibility. And for those types of coolers, that is crucial. But would I consider to upgrade from this to this? Absolutely not. The benefits are way too small to make sense, also because this didn't outclass the old one. Both of these crumbled when looking at 250 watts, and both of them are suitable for max 120, maybe 150 watts applications. Sure, you can run your 14600, 14600K, 7600, maybe even 7700X3D, but that's it. And that applies to both coolers. As for noise to performance, yes, the new one is overall a tick better all the way through, but that's, it's just not a different class. So as for me, if I were to build myself a new ultra small form factor build and I have 77 millimeters, sure, I would choose the new one. Hopefully the case allows me to go a bit higher and I can relocate the fan on top so that I can improve the performance greatly. But if I were to start from scratch and I have the space, the new one is my choice. But if I already have the old one, the update is just not worth it in my opinion. It's not like a game changer. It's a small generational update in my opinion, price wise. It's knocked you. And the new one is going for around 85 euros right here and now. And that's hefty, especially because if you got the space, you could also just go with the old one for 70 bucks, relocate the fan on top and pretend like as if you had the new one with the fan below and just never tell anybody. That works too. But okay, this should be everything on the generational update of small form factor coolers. And at this point, a huge thank you to Nokia for sending this one over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get multiple X77s, bend the heat pipe straight, glue one on top of the other, and boom, the new Noctua NHU12 X77 X2. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Be Quiet Pure Look LP. If you don't have the space, this might be for you. Thank you for watching, and hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.